Hey y'all, it's uh, Tuesday evening when I'm shooting this video and I came back out to the garden tonight um, to harvest a few things that I did not get this morning and just do a quick walk through and <laughs> check. These chickens always make me laugh. They're sitting over here. Watching me, hoping I'm gonna bring him a snack or let them out. And this guy, he's always up on top of that little house. But anyway, um, let's get in the garden, y'all. See what's going on. Looks like I am gonna have some lemon cucumber if everything keeps going how it should um, to take to my family at the end of next week. I've got a lot. A lot of lemon cucumber coming. This one doesn't look like it's gonna make it right here though. But um, that's exciting. I've been looking at the forecast uh, for the weather. It looks like we're gonna get a lot of rain while I'm gone. So that's either good or bad. <laughs> good because my team won't have to water the garden as much while I'm gone. But it could be bad too because it could cause some issues with my tomatoes. I know I have some uh, zucchini or a zucchini to harvest. I wanted to check on that guy right there because he's shaped kind of funky. He's shaped like a crook neck squash. Um, but I also have um, some okra to harvest. I know that for a fact. I, I went ahead and left it this morning to let it grow just a little bit more. So let me go over here and get the zucchini. thought about getting these beans too, but I might wait to just another day on the beans. It's a good size, but I accidentally hit the end off, so we'll have to harvest this pretty soon. This is the one I wanted to look at. See how it looks like a, shaped like a squash? Hmm. Now on this plant in particular, you can see I've got lots of okra coming. And this is a blossom that's developing here. And these are all blossoms that have already opened. And there's the okra coming in behind it. But... I have this pod that needs to be harvested. You want to harvest them when they're about as long as your index finger um, for this variety especially because they get too tough. They get like a um, very woody texture almost like, a, like you're eating a piece of wood. You also want to make sure that you are um, harvesting these with shears or scissors because um, the stem is rather thick, and if you try to break it, you will break the plant if you try to, to take it off. But that's typically about the size you want to get it. And if you chop it to fry it, you'll get about four or five pieces out of that. Or you can roast it. And I have one more on this plant to harvest right here, and I think I saw another one on the other side to harvest. Still waiting for these cherry tomatoes to start turning. Typically, that is your first um, variety of tomatoes that ripens. And these guys are just still green. No blushing at all. Well, I say they're green. They're really almost yellow. Because when I was out here pruning them the other day, my entire arm was yellow from the pollen. But they're just not, um, they're not turning yet. Guess I need to go back here and check on my beefsteaks because I can see some red poking out back in the back. So let me share this. One of my long keepers, I'm actually about to have to pull the plant out. Um, this is one of the ones I was going to keep my eye on. But look at the bottom. Limbs. 
And as you come up, you'll see that these tomatoes are just completely black. So this plant has blight. I mean, it's still producing up at the top, but you can even see here. So I'm going to dispose of this plant before I go home and get it out of here. You can just tell from the leaves, too, that it's sick. So that guy's got to go. Look at how pretty the San Marzano is getting. Some of these are getting blossom and rot. Ugh. This one still looks fine. This whole cluster still looks okay. It's very upsetting. And there's my beef steak. And some little peppers here, aren't I? I'm gonna harvest a couple of these to try to increase production on this plant. I need to grab these cucamelons too. Yeah, I see you. I was reaching in here to uh, get a uh, tomato off that had blossom and rot and uh, saw this guy. Look at how much damage he's done to my plant. Mm. Got to get out here with the black light morning when I give my garden tour this bell pepper is actually bigger than this one so sorry dude you're not the biggest this guy over here is and this guy is taking a nap or something no he's waking up now getting all that pollen okay now that I've found that hornworm I'm definitely Looking around a little closer. I was hoping I'd just find the one this year like last year, but our plants are just too irresistible, I guess. I did not realize I had some fruit set on these golden jubilees. And really the only reason why I'm growing golden jubilee is because... Years ago, some of my family's close friends moved to Mobile Bay, Daphne, which is where my brother lives now. And there's a phenomenon that happens there and in a place in Japan called Jubilee. Um, I can't remember the exact, uh, what exactly happens. I mean, I'd have to go back and look it up because it's just so bizarre. But essentially, the salt uh, content in Mobile Bay drops so much that the fish um, kind of jump up on the shore or wash up on shore. And you just kind of walk through and pick up fish off the, sh off the shoreline. Um, I'll, I'll link it below. I'll link a, a link that explains it. But anyway, that's the only reason why I'm growing the Golden Jubilee guys like on speed he is just going to town but that's the only reason I'm growing the golden jubilee so I'm glad this plant survived it looked like a lot of those plants over here the first couple of days after I planted him he looked like some of these plants and I nurtured it back to health <laughs> with water and nutrients, which is what I'm doing with those plants. So we'll see if they make it. I do have to get this uh, tomato plant pulled up though. It's probably gonna be a little bit of a pain getting it out. Y'all see that? That looks like hornworm damage. I see a hornworm here. I see poop. Oh, look at that. Look at that. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, it's on that tomato potato plant too. There's one over there somewhere. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let me let me go get my jar. Because I, I decided not to give these to the chickens. I'm gonna take them home and let the kids look at them, and then we can bring them back to the chickens tomorrow. Looks like there's two on this plant. If I had not caught these guys tonight, they probably could have wiped out this whole plant. I'm going to have to search to look for some more. I don't think my black light's in my purse because the kids kept playing with it. So, tomorrow night, we're going on a hunt. So, these le leaves are stripped off, but I don't see any worms here. So, I don't know, like, where they travel to next or how they travel i guess i need to do some research on them just not seeing any right here but that's definitely remnants of hornworm damage i see a cucumber beetle right here too so let me get rid of him um yeah i had to go get my bug glove because i didn't want to touch and um oh 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 look First two blushing tomatoes over here. OMG. I'm so excited. These are the baby boom? Yep, baby boomers. Awesome. So exciting, y'all. So exciting. Let's get this dead guy out of here. Is this where you are? Oh, no, he's over here. Yeah, it's a shame because there's several. Maybe I'll just leave them for a little while longer and just cut all this off. What do y'all think? He's got, he's still producing fruit and flowers. I think I might just trim them up. Let's see if I can salvage them. I'll wait a little bit longer. And look what I found when I pulled this stem off of this guy. Ugh. Y'all, this is just too wild. There were two attacking him a moment ago. But he has made himself secrete whatever's inside of them so that the fly can't touch him. So crazy. Anyway, he's going in the jar. Okay, so I collected five hornworms. One, two, three, four, five. Um, going to take these back home, let the kids see them and inspect them, and maybe Chris will feed them to his tarantulas. Yes, we have tarantulas. Ugh. Um, I don't know if tarantulas eat hornworms, but if not, I can bring them back to the chickens in the morning. And tomorrow night, we are hunting... Hornworms. Um, also tonight, I'm hoping to see the comet Neowise. I don't know if you guys are into science or space. I totally am. <laughs> That's my thing. And um, there is a comet that is visible to the naked eye. You will be able to see it in the northwestern sky after sunset near the Little Dipper. Ooh, you need to go. Um, so make sure you try to check that out. You can see it. Um, it'll rise each night. It'll rise in the horizon. So if you, you can't see because of low, uh, because you don't have a, a clear line of the uh, northwestern horizon, you'll have another opportunity to see it on July 23rd, that evening, which is uh, next Thursday. It will be the closest to Earth. I think it's like 68 million miles away but it still will be the closest to earth and it is visible to the naked eye and it will not be back for 6800 years after it leaves um a couple of days ago it just traveled around the sun and so now it's on its way back out into the milky way and other galaxies uh so Definitely want to try to check that out if you can. The northwestern sky near the, the Big Dipper. Um, check it out. See if you can find it. You should be able to take a photo of it. Uh, you could see it with the naked eye and with binoculars. Um, 
I was thinking about trying to track it with my um, telescope, but um, I have that all packed up in the basement. Where we live now is just not very good uh, sight lines for my telescope. I only have like a small window straight above that I can see because we just have so many trees. That is something that I'm looking for in a future property is uh, sight lines to be able to see um, the sky at night. So, um, definitely try to check it out if you have an opportunity to. It's really cool. Take your kids out. Show it to your kids. I have fond memories um, growing up and my dad taking us out to see um, meteor showers and celestial events. And we were, um, we would pull the couch outside. Um, if you know my dad, then you know that that's kind of weird that he would do that. But we would pull the couch outside and um, watch celestial events under under the sky on our couch. But um, anyway, try to check out Neowise. I'm gonna do some scouting tonight and I think tomorrow night we may um, find us a spot to watch Neowise and then head over here to uh, look for hornworms but anyway i hope y'all have a wonderful evening um thank you for joining me uh hunting hornworms tonight and i will see y'all next time good night y'all